A major WWE star has been possibly written off TV. Plus, Vince McMahon was backstage at SmackDown last night and a Hall of Famer made their SmackDown return. It's all in the wrestling news right now. SmackDown from world-famous Madison Square Garden last night opened with the trial of the Tribal Chief. Something tells me it was going to be um, quite heavily weighted in his favor. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like it was. It seemed like it wasn't the case because it looked, for all intents and purposes, that he was going to hand control oh, to come Jay. On. Come Gave on, him the lay. No, there's no way. Took off the belt. Although, although, as he took the belt off, you heard a, a Velcro, yeah. and that took me out of it briefly. Oh man! And they went down on one knee to to pay homage mm -hmm. to the new tribal chief, and then whoop! Give him a low blow. Right in the chap. Right in the chap. Uh, Jimmy and Jay proceed to get beaten up by Solo and Roman here. There's a nice little bit where Solo holds the lay, and he's like, "Oh, I could, I might be a tribal chief for a minute." Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the more interesting thing, I think. Mm. That's that's the thing bubbling away in 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 the corner. Mm. Mm, the, the, big, the big part of last night was Jay being held down by Solo as Jimmy got an absolute pasting. Yeah, he was made to watch. Steel steps to the face several yeah. times. Big splash through the announce table. And Jimmy getting stretched away and taken to La Hospital. Jay Uso would return later in the night for vengeance with a steel chair battering Solo and Roman Reigns and says that he wants one more go around with Roman Reigns. The wording here being interesting, saying no brothers, no wise men, me and you, one on one. Which suggests to me that Jimmy's gone for a bit i think yeah it, it's sort of when you look at it this could be just a reason to kind of keep jimmy away from the storyline for a little bit so we can do the one-on-one -on -one match you're still gonna have solo to deal with in some way and i don't know how you possibly have a fair fight against roman no you don't uh, simply because even if you put it inside like a kennel from hell like structure where it was multiple cages so people even if they tried to interfere <laughs> had to get through say three cages to get they're gonna get in you put him in like a you could put it in style like, maze to you get could put like in. the punjabi prison around a cell with a cage inside of it <laughs> and they'd still find a way in <laughs> they drill their way in. yeah uh, opening segment on SmackDown I thought was fantastic I really enjoyed the mm. whole like it was a good 40 minutes of the show yeah but I was gripped for the whole thing I think it, th this is the thing that sort of a lot of people are, are raising about it is it, it it is kind of eating up a lot of the show and a lot of people are kind of like well is it worth it and it's like I think the storyline's really good I think it, it's really prominent obviously for the company right now and I think that um, it does need that extra time but it is kind of I, I do get where people are coming from where it's a bit sort of like oof like it's 40 minutes it's a long segment but, I, a but, but personally i enjoyed it i know i yeah. love your thoughts down there i think this is part of roman's sizzle reel for hollywood i'll be perfectly honest yeah I, i'm crying so you can see the full range of my emotions you know the whole thing is basically that the roman's gonna have to drop the belt at some point but that doesn't necessarily mean the story is going to be over no. i think there's still going to be a lot of legs to go on that one so i it's sort of we're, we're kind of building to something strange happening, but I think that it makes sense to have Jay Roman one-on-one -on -one in some capacity. If we can make it a fair fight, mm. that would be grand. And for now, it is looking that is the case. It's been reported earlier this week that Jay versus Roman is a match that will take place at SummerSlam in Detroit. It wasn't confirmed as much last mm. night, but as expected, I would reckon maybe even in the next week for them to go SummerSlam, there you go, go at it. Yeah. And uh, we'll see Jimmy when we see Jimmy. Tell you who we did see back still. Well, we didn't see, but if you were, if you were a wrestler in Madison Square Garden. You'd have seen him last night. Vince McMahon. <laughs> yeah, Vince was backstage. There's been uh, no talk. So this was reported by Fightful and PW Insider. Vince was obviously backstage at MSG. Uh, not entirely surprising considering Madison Square Garden is the home of WWE. That's, mm. you know, the company is tied to MSG as far back as the Capitol Wrestling days. It makes sense for Vince to be there if he's going to be at any venue, I feel. Uh, apparently he arrived about two hours before the show started and it's not currently known what changes if any he made to the program but we have been hearing that it's been getting a bit tense with changes kind of coming you know quite close to showtime uh, we reported a couple of weekends ago i think that it was one of those where hey like we don't mind the changes it's just give us them on the morning give us them in the afternoon don't give us them just before the show because then it changes absolutely everything this is why they've been sort of Vince proofing the shows mm. by booking them weeks in advance because Vince doesn't like. They just keep changing all the locks. <laughs> Vince somehow has 
has a, a master key to it as well. <laughs> there was a there was a report going around this week as well. There was some rumour and innuendo that said that there was uh, a, a planned meeting between Triple H and Vince McMahon about this very subject this week. Yeah. Meant to happen at Raw. Uh, was possibly going to happen at SmackDown. A few people backstage have poo pooed that from happening. Mm. Uh, but we're certainly one to keep an eye on. But I, I was under the impression that whilst Vince has been working remotely, yeah. I, he was going to be at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I don't think there was any way he wasn't going to be there. And I think that the the thing that surprises me the most is I thought Vince, having sort of stepped back a bit and having made a lot of money, uh, <laughs> would have gone into the, the mental promotion game, gone back to some crazy things like when he did the Snake, uh, Snake River Canyon jump with Evil Knievel or, <laughs> you know, go for some mega huge boxing match. I want to see Vince just throwing money at really stupid things. That's what I want to see. I'm we not too bothered about it. having him in and around <laughs> Like anymore. I want to see him do crazy stuff. I like to see Vince book, you know, booking more stunts. Well, he was responsible for, uh, well, he helped sort of manage the, the booking and, and the handling of Anoki uh, Ali, right? So he's, yeah. he's got a history of kind of just doing out there things. Exactly. But for now, he's keeping his hand in, obviously, in the wrestling because Vince McMahon, very much like my dietary requirements, love a bit of MSG. <laughs> Brand new worst shows ever, by the way, today. Yes. Uh, uh, with Fraser Porter. I'm going to give that a cheeky I'm blow. not going to tell you what it is, but it is a king. King of the Ring. Oh, Ooh. and how much this guy weighs. Uh, also, a brand new episode of the Cultolic Classic Smackdown Review is on the podcast feed right now if you want to catch me and Matthew Gregg chatting and, about the Smackdown. And if you missed it, because we it's just been a string of random Wednesdays that we've not been able to connect to shoot it. We have got back to Nitro, everybody. Yes. So if you wanted to catch up on Nitro Review, we're back. We're back at it. Free, exclusive Cultolic <laughs> podcast feed based goodness from myself and Sam Driver, the Cultolic Classic Nitro Review, the Smackdown Review you and loads of other daily content waiting for you on the podcast feed. Meanwhile, back to the small matter of SmackDown, right? Mm -hmm. Five for Select giving us a few little bits and pieces, as did PW Insider. A lot of love for the Bloodline segment backstage, obviously. Not surprising there. Mm. Uh, Trick Williams from NXT was backstage. Again, not surprising. Uh, It's uh, he's somebody we're hearing a lot of buzz about, you know, in regards to potential call-ups. We are hearing a lot of rumblings about potential call-ups, you know, over the last couple of weeks. So it, it's something where I, I kind of, you know, I think maybe if not now, then very soon. And where was LA Knight when all this was going on? He was nowhere to be seen, Tom. Yeah. Uh, you watch that whole episode. There's no LA Knight. They don't understand what they're doing. Why aren't they got LA Knight out there, Tom? He was there just when the cameras weren't on, it seemed. Uh, he uh, beat up Hit Row in a dark... Yeah. I say a dark segment before SmackDown went on air. I, I'm pretty sure I saw it on the YouTube channel have this you, morning. Have you seen the reaction to it? It's ridiculous. It's it's absolutely insane. It's like that guy is is so over. Just just give him everything. Give him the world right now, please. I, I think knowing that the the, the tribal uh, the tribal court session was going to yeah. go the distance, they couldn't not have LA Knight in the building to do something. So yeah. I guess this was you know that and something that they'll share as a YouTube exclusive, a WWE.com exclusive yeah, is I the way to go. It was just watching all of the fan footage of the match just coming in like oh. thick and fast on social media, uh, and it was just like the, the place was just. Electric. It was mm. no other way to put it. They were nice, and they were nice and electric to see Edge make his return to mm. SmackDown as well. WWE Hall of Famer Edge is back. First time we've seen him since before uh, Night of Champions. He was on the Grayson Waller effect. Uh, yeah. So it, as you said, it was his first appearance since before Night of Champions. But he talks about how his first WWE pay per view was in Madison Square Garden, teaming with Sable. Big shout out. Big shout, uh, Sabes against Mark Mero and. Jacqueline, uh, which is the first mention of Sable on WWE TV in many, many, many I'd years. I'd say almost a decade. There's a bit of a convoluted know. history with Sable and the company, convoluted, complicated history rather, um, you know, involved in lawsuits, a lot of other things. And she's kind of just, I think, was it Ivory was saying? She's just sort of moved away from public life and she just wants to live a normal life now. on the farm so. with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, so it's sort of, it was it was nice to kind of hear her get a shout out. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that as well. Grayson Waller seemed to think that Edge was there to announce his retirement. I think some of us thought that as well, but no! Oh, in He's fact, already done that once. He doesn't need to do it again. He'll just, just keep going. <laughs> forever. Just keep going. Forever. Yeah. Uh, Edge <laughs> didn't announce his retirement. In fact, he said he was there to have a match against Grayson Waller. This is Grayson Waller's first match on SmackDown because he suffered an injury mm. in his last NXT 
uh, offering and hasn't wrestled on SmackDown. No, yet. but thankfully we've had the Grayson Waller effect to kind of get the crowd, you mm. know, prepped and ready. Anybody that hasn't been watching NXT kind of has the flavor now and they know exactly what they're going to get. And now they get to see him in ring. Uh, he had a competitive match against Edge, but he did fall to the spear. It's a lovely finish where Waller ran back into the ring, rolled into the ring and literally the just big hug. ran into a big <laughs> hug by Edge. Good lad. Uh, and then in, in a call back to the segment they had where Edge was saying like, you'll either sink or swim round here. Yeah. He leans into Grayson Waller and says, you swam. So I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. Ah. nice. I don't think you yeah. swam will catch on as a catchphrase. <laughs> Uh, you know, unless you work for like, you know, the uh, the Ludlow it's Municipal merch, Pool. I swear. <laughs> the Ludlow Leisure Centre. I don't know. Uh, Five will select say there's a lot of positive reception over Grayson Waller's performance over the past week, even before his match with Edge. There's lots of love for Grayson Waller. Yeah, it's not surprising. The guy is massively entertaining, uh, both in ring and on the mic. He is going to go very, very, very far. We just got to hope that, you know, they keep everything uh in and around him nice and, and they, they sort of put him with the right people. But enough about Sam Driver. That's Grayson Waller as well. And for the latest wrestling news throughout <laughs> the day, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye. <laughs>